Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski, and in this organic chemistry video, we'll be introducing the SN2 substitution mechanism. Alkyl halides react through two substitution mechanisms, those are named SN1 and SN2, and we're going to study SN2 first. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what these symbols mean. So the first thing is the big capital S stands for substitution, that tells you that it's a substitution type mechanism. The subscript N stands for nucleophilic. That means that it's going to be a nucleophile that's doing the substituting. It's going to take the place of the leaving group. The two means second order. It doesn't mean two steps. It's actually a single step mechanism, the SN2 reaction. So two molecules come together in the rate limiting step. Bimolecular is what the two stands for. Here are some details on the SN2 substitution mechanism. So in this example, I'm going to use the, this OH- as a nucleophile, and here's an alkyl halide, specific alkyl halide. It's got a carbon attached to a bromine, and I've listed the partial positive and partial negatives here on those atoms. So here the OH- is the nucleophile. It's the electron-rich species. It's going to be one of these pairs of electrons that's going to come in and attack that carbon and then displace the bromine. The nucleophile attacks the partially positive carbon and the leaving group bromine leaves. As the molecule proceeds through this mechanism, as the nucleophile starts to get close to the alkyl halide, it goes through something called a transition state. There is a point at which the nucleophile is getting close to that carbon and the leaving group is starting to leave. The point at which it's kind of halfway through that, this is something called the transition state. The reaction then proceeds on to give products. So there's the substitution product and the leaving group at that point has left. So let's come back and talk about the transition state a little bit more. Transition states are very unstable. You can see from this molecule here, there's a dotted line here that indicates a partially formed bond. This is a partially broken bond. If you take a look at the geometry of carbon, it's kind of odd. It's not like a typical carbon. This particular species has a trignal bipyramidal geometry, which is very unusual for carbon. So this is a fairly uncomfortable state for carbon to be in, and this species is really quite high energy. That's the reason it's drawn in brackets. It can't be isolated. It's a high energy point on the path from starting materials to products. The SN2 mechanism is a concerted mechanism, which means it all occurs in a single step. The reaction is bimolecular. That means that the nucleophile and the alkyl halide come together in the rate limiting step. So they need to find each other in a reaction mixture in order for the SN2 reaction to happen. And the rate of the SN2 reaction here depends on that fact. So the rate law for an SN2 reaction is the K, that's the rate constant, times the concentration of nucleophile times the concentration of alkyl halide. In an SN2 reaction, if you double the concentration of nucleophile, you'll double the reaction rate. If you double the concentration of alkyl halide, you'll also double the reaction rate. If you double both the nucleophile and the alkyl halide concentration, you'll quadruple the SN2 rate, and so on. So that's how the SN2 reaction responds to changes in concentration. This slide talks about the SN2 substitution mechanism, and so here's that picture of what was described on the previous slide. There's the nucleophile, the alkyl halide, we've got our transition state, and then the substitution product and the leaving group. We can graph the energy changes here that are occurring in the process. So this diagram shows on the x-axis reaction coordinate, that's just the progressing of time, so how the species change over time. On the y-axis there's energy, and here I'm using units of kilojoules per mole. So we can draw a graph that indicates the changes in energy of the species over time. So over here on the left side, this point would represent the starting material, so the energies of the nucleophile and the alkyl halide. This point right here lists the energy of the transition state, this species, and notice how that's at the, high, uh, the top of this hump here. And then over here on the right side at the bottom, this represents the energy of the substitution product and the leaving group. So there's a few things you can learn from an energy diagram like this. So if you draw a reference line here and then determine the height between where the molecule started in energy and the height of the transition state here, this distance is E sub A, that stands for activation energy. That's the amount of energy that it requires to, you're required to put in to get the reaction to go. And it affects the rate of the reaction. The higher this hump, the slower the reaction. 
The other thing you can do is you can measure the distance between where the molecule started and where they ended, and that difference is delta G. So delta G tells you about the equilibrium constant of the reaction. Are products favored or are reactants favored? It depends on delta G. And so in this case, since the products are lower in energy than the starting materials, products would be favored in this case. And here, if this is each one of these units is a uh, some measure of kilojoules per mole, you could figure out exactly how much more favored the product is, and you could actually calculate an equilibrium constant for this reaction based on that delta G.